What's up, Debbie Vlog? So, it's December. We're gearing up for the month of Ho-Ho-Ho's and Season's Greeting and the Yuletide. That's not even Roll Tide. I don't know what that is. So, I have an issue with it because how am I supposed to get into Everywhere else they have snowfall coming down, but that doesn't happen here. All that happens here is, 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 is that, is that right there. You see, it's December. So everything that I've been marketed about Christmas is about all this cheer. So how, how am I supposed to feel? How am I supposed to feel when there's no holiday cheer of any kind? So naturally, I'm gonna be upset. Nobody cares. No one's happy. I, I don't think people take the time to, to really think about other people like that. And it's a little upsetting, but whatever, man. It's not like I'm gonna be in the holiday cheer or anything. Damn, I've graduated to the final stages of content creator hell going to Target to the Christmas party. My god, it is the weekend before Christmas. What have I done? Man, do these things even light up? Like, yeah. how do we know there's a never? There we go. It's... I'm actually here for one very specific thing. I need Christmas lights for the Christmas tree. Just at the house. Normally I would just get this online. We're running low on time. Damn. I do want an air fryer. There it is again. Damn. I do need some pots. Oh my god. Target absolutely will not sleep until I get this air fryer. If you're watching, smash that like so I can afford this nice air fryer. Oh man, I think we made it. Now the real question is, will there be any? Damn, what's that? Hold up. The storage spool? All right, I don't need 20 meters of light. This is, this is for inside. So close. I guess that's why they're on sale. Looks like we're just gonna have to get with the times. I just have such a small tree, I feel like 19 feet of light is a little extra. Yes. This is all I wanted, I'm a simple man. What a simple Christmas light. They're LEDs, but I will accept this uh, slightly lit Christmas. Oh my <laughs> Alright, so the good news was we were able to get lights. The bad news is that I was not able to find the most essential Christmas accessory for a tree, a star. But I might have one at home. I guess I'll have to dig. I really don't want to. <laughs> I think they got me. God. Damn it. Trash. Yo, I love the future. You can just check shit out yourself. One, two. We are out of here. Whew. I certainly appreciate the elevator light that works. I feel like I might actually go somewhere. I damn did. Do not own anything strong enough to, to chop it. So it just kind of is what it is. You know, I kind of like that. Got like the branch next to it, so like the star just like has to learn to share a little. And the last, but certainly not least. Let's get some light on this tree. Wow. All right, I think that is just enough. All right, now for the star. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And we're back. Top five albums now. Five albums of the decade. My top five albums. My most favorite ones. Most listened to. Most enjoyed albums of the decade. Number five. Playboy Cardi. Die Lip. Now, it's going to end up on the tail end because I bump it. I enjoy it. I love the audio to it. It's super, super fun. And my top five kind of rounds out more songwriting albums than necessarily listening ones. But this is probably the most fun album I have it's on this list at this point, where it's just super fun, great aesthetic, love the record, please pull out a whole lot of red, definitely, thank you, Mr. Cardi. Arcade Fire, The Suburbs. Now, here's where we get a little tricky. This album, the older I've gotten, the more it resonates. The lyrical themes are very depth, and it kind of is in this situation where most of us are, right? Most millennial youths, most people who are trying to struggle to make it, we're in the same path of, we're trying to improve, we're trying to get better, we're trying to become all these things, but the weight of an old world and the promise of a new world is on us, and it kind of leaves us stuck in the middle, trying to figure out what to do with both. There's lyrical highlights all over this album. If you've ever made music with me, I've tried to press you to listen to this album. I think it's excellent. I think it's good for anybody who's, who's searching for more as an adult and looking for more adult themes, and I strongly urge you to check it out. Number three, Kanye West, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I know Fantano loves it as a six. I had to listen to this record again to really get to the point of why the record is great. It, the record is great because it's the best rap album ever. And it's grandeur, it's tackles, it's themes, it's um, distance from reality, it's distance from, from Kanye and bringing him closer. It's just there's so much themes going on into there. And I know it's, it's hard to look at him like that today given how churchy he is and how different he tends to be. But going back in that time, between that and Watch Your Throne, he was on fire. That album to me summarizes the best that rap can be and the best it could be at its pinnacle level. I love that record. The Weeknd, Kissland. This might be a little bit confusing for most, but let me explain. I love the trilogy, House of Balloons, Echoes of Silence, Thursday. But this record to me always gets a bad rap. And I feel that most people never got to understand it because they never got to see it live. I was fortunate enough to see this tour three times. And seeing the live demonstration of Kissland is what did it for me. And the whole album is one sonic experience of a person who now has all the money and all the debauchery and can't control himself. I find this to be my favorite period of the weekend where he grew and he had access but he didn't know what to do with it. Right before Earned It came out and all these other big singles, it's this darker area in his career but I find it fantastic. And I find all the songs flow together very, very well. Everything feels like an environment. I strongly suggest you to give it another try. Not many singles out there besides Belong to the World and Kissland, but I think if you put that record on and rip and you whew, something, you're gonna have a great fucking time. Honorable mention again, uh, Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly. It is a record that I took forever to get into, but once I understood it, I really, really liked it. I love the themes of it. Mortal Man to me is one of the best rap compositions of all time. And there's just so many dense themes within that record that I really think it's not an everyday listen, but it's definitely something that you can get something out of for that record. And number one, I think this is no surprise, Bruno Mars 24 Karat Magic. It is my favorite record to listen to. It is my favorite record to steal, you know, song ideas from. It is my favorite record to study for vocals, for instrumentation. I love every package she's delivered it in. I have it on vinyl, I have it on tape, I have it on CD. I can't speak enough of this record. Everybody should listen to it. And the reason it gets my number one pick from the decade is because I wanted a feel-good record. A record that how Thriller made people feel before. And this is a record for me. The other records are very mood dependent. Am I songwriting? Am I doing this? Am I doing X, Y, Z? But this record specifically, it just throw it on and have a good time. And that's why it's my number one. And it's my number one spun out of everything. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching the Demi vlog. Go get some t-shirts, go get some merch. Go help us out to continue this vlog for the new year. I've been Joda. Peace.